Okay, up till here. Uh, diseases can, ha can have many sexual consequences and treatment can have many sexual mm -hmm. consequences. So it's better to address the topic. After that, when you address the topic, we professionals, we have lots of information to share with the patients because we know how things are running. And then, uh, probably you can give a good advice. If not, send it to the sexologists. Sexologists, they know they have a very big uh, box with tools to help. I'll show some of them. Providing clarity in the male-female troubles, uh, restructuring roles, dealing with fatigue and pain. We have our own ways to deal with that. Renegotiating Rene intimacy, <coughs> dealing with loss and mourning when you have lost an important piece of your sex life, assisting in getting new erogenic zones, teaching on tools and toys and lubricants and that kind of things, management with stoma and continence, dealing with side effects of medication. Also, we know very well how to deal with the side effects of antidepressants. Hormonal deficiencies, we know how to deal with that. Partner relation therapy sometimes, medication, lubricant, et cetera, et cetera. We, we know a lot, so it's good to use that. Now, this is something additional. Up till now, you don't have in Iceland uh, people uh, experienced in sexual medicine. We have medical sexology, you are one of them, but doctors who have a training in sexual medicine, it's something very new. We have started that some years ago, uh, starting with the urologist on impotence, and gradually it increased uh, and spread out, and it's now a new area. We had in December, we had the first exams in sexual medicine, so people can now become fellow in the European uh, Committee of Sexual Medicine. They have uh, an exam again next year in January and they have courses, 10 day courses and the next course is in October. I don't know yet where the course will be. And we have also a big book and I'll give you one book for your Icelandic group because I brought one. And it's a big one, it's 1,200 pages. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, Durex, it's not the Durex book. It's, uh, <laughs> so I think I hand it to you, and you have to take care that it's used a lot. <laughs> okay, that was my message. Any questions? How possible that there are so few males in the surrounding? Uh, I, I remember that one year ago I was giving a lecture in Iceland and after that some of the women said, and, and I was explaining about male-female differences and some of the women didn't agree with me. They said there is no difference. One of the differences is the fact that there are so few male here. And it's not that they are not interested, but they are interested in a different way. We have now, we are building up, at least in Holland, a group of male andrologists. Uh, it's the urologist who is dealing a lot with fertility and hormones in the man. It's, let's say, the male counterpart of gynecology. And they are much more interested in male sexual health. There is in uh, June or July there will be a very big meeting in Berlin on male sexual health and on prostate, but also on all different kinds. And that is a very important area and we need more men in this field as well, as role models also. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. In time. Yeah, in time. Yes, always on time. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I'm not in time, I stop early, all right? <laughs> <That's>, uh... <laughs>